Happy Halloween, friends of Old Man Brad and friends of the Real Feels podcast. Damn, Skippy. We are back with another Halloween joint venture for you. Last year, we talked the anthology film 1031. This year, we're moving on to the first of the sequels, 1031 Part 2. How are you doing today, Drew? How's how's your Halloween season been thus far? Hmm. Halloween season has been full of fun little rewatches, good festivities. The weather is actually cooling down. It's I'll, I'll be honest, Bradley. I, I bought a cardigan last year and I never got to wear it. And I think this might be the time. I'm really I'm really excited. Like, I mean, this is this is going to have been a good adventure uh, for fall so far. I mean, you and I, we're pretty much in Halloween mindset 365 days of the right, year. Right. It is, it's, it's all year. It's all year. <laughs> but I myself and, you know, we both love like challenges and lists and yes. stuff. I found I found I've, I found two different lists, you know, that I've kind of been following along. One is through AVA pop culture and the other. I can't remember exactly who it was, but um, the GLHC podcast put it out there and. I started following theirs. Theirs was more fill in the blank with themes. AVA pop culture actually had a list that uh, he challenged everyone to watch. So it's been good to fill in my days. And I've, I've been doing my 31 days of terror on Tubi. So Mm -hmm. I've been throwing that out there and it's been a mix of themes and movies that I've thrown out for people to watch next year. I, I might do the whole list of like, Here's a list, but that's kind of hard with Tubi because I could come up with this list early, and then by October, what if some of those leave? That's very true. So that that's kind of why I've been. It's been kind of a on the fly thing for me because I'm like, well, the movies. Hopefully, the movies still here. Some that I'm thinking of, but you know what is on Tubi, and I know you and I both have the Blu-ray as well. Ten Thirty One Part Two. Yes, it is. It's also on Prime, but everyone, you should you should focus on Tubi. Go give Tubi some love. Pay for a subscription. Or wait. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you telling me it's free? It is 100% free. You know, we never finished, Drew, by the way, before we jump into 1031. We never finished our 200 Days of Horror discussion. We never really did. We we, we left people hanging, I think, with yeah. like part three, and we never we never did a finale. It's it's okay. People, you can address all your hate mail to old man Brad at gmail. <laughs> old man Brad podcast at gmail.com. You can just let me know everything. Let us know your um your woes and sorrows and how disappointed you are. To be fair, we might not have reported on it, but we did watch. So if you ever want to find out what we watched, you can always go check out my letterbox and you can yes. go check out Brad's letterbox. Yep. I made a I made a list of it, so it's all there. I did 207 movies total for the 200 days. I think you did a few more than me. <laughs> I'm going to give you an exact number <laughs> because we both know it's not just a few. Um, 200, 200 days of horror for me was 370 movies. Almost doubled it. Because I'm a sad, lonely person. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have kids. So, you know, that takes up a lot of my time running and running them around to various things. Like so. I said, sad. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I just have the time. Was there any like one movie you watched during that time that was like, oh, this is the one that just like really stood out? I don't know if I have one that's one in particular that's like. This was the now, best if we, thing. If we're going to look at things that I gave like the highest ratings for. For the 200 days of horror from something that is not like mainstream, if we're going to go just slightly independent, Spring was one that I actually really, really liked. I know that one. Eczema and uh, First Omen were probably the newer films. I love the first that uh, that did a good job. Late Night with the Devil and Abigail as well. And then everything else kind of is uh, is up there with what should be up there. Yeah, those were those are probably the non mainstream movies. I mean, they are some of them are mainstream, but they're newer. So, yeah, biggest one for me that that stood out was I got to cover films as part of remote coverage for Fantastic Fest. And one of them, it's an Estonian film called Chainsaws Were Singing. Such a fun title. It's basically if you made the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 
but it was Monty Python. Like it's musical. Uh, I it's, love that. It's just goofy. It's over the top and an absolute blast. I love all of that <laughs> so much. It's not out like streaming or anywhere yet. They're still doing festival runs, but it's one to keep in mind to kind of, if you ever see it like pop up somewhere like, oh yes, I need, I should watch this because it's, it's great. All right, Drew, you ready to to move into it? Yes, I I am. Well, let's talk 1031 part two. Welcome back to my Halloween monster marathon. The last day of October is upon us. That's right, today is All Hallows Eve. Where creatures lurk in the shadows, awaiting trick-or-treaters to leave their houses. Be careful of who may be lurking around the corner. You never know what may steal the life from out of you. Will everyone make it out alive? We can only hope they don't. Join horror host Malvolia, the Queen of Screams, as she celebrates this year's Halloween Monster Marathon with five new tales of terror and the macabre. This Halloween horror anthology from independent horror's best and bloodiest directors is a grab bag of treats you are sure to enjoy. This came out, what, 2019, I believe? Yes. I'd only watched it once before. This was like a second time around. And I'll tell you, from what I remembered watching it the first time, I enjoyed it a lot more the second time. I was like, you know what? This was a lot better than I remembered it being. I did not remember all of the segments, but I did remember quite a few. I still enjoyed myself. I found it to be fun. I found... The ones that I did remember, I obviously like paid more attention to, which is kind of the irony to, to the ones that I didn't remember. But I think paying more attention to it because like I, I vaguely remembered the plot. So paying attention to like little details. And I'll be very fair, since we both do have the Blu-ray, the downside to the Blu-ray is that there's no subtitles. Oh, see, and I watched it on Tubi. So Okay, so when I went and watched it, on streaming, there were there were subtitles. I actually had to stop in the midst of the the deadlift, and I immediately went to streaming because I was like, I can't, because there was there was something about the passenger's voice when it was echoey. Okay, yep, I know what you mean. It was kind of hard to hear him without. I can't hear without my subtitles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so true. Yeah, I I, I did eventually have to go over to uh the streaming but yeah paying attention to the ones that i that i vaguely remembered it was neat to notice a few more details it was neat to notice a little bit more about like the sets obviously yeah. and, and the characters and stuff thinking about it like i really liked the first one i thought the first one was pretty solid and from what i'd remembered from the second one i was like okay this one the second one was good but not as good but on this rewatch i think it was pretty equal to the first one now was deadlift the first or the second one because the first one was the girl babysitting the boy yeah the first our, our stories well well it starts off first with faux trailers right so we right. get so we one truck squatch and the october kids yep treaters truck sasquatch the candy taker and october kids which i actually really enjoyed these and would love to see them expanded into I want to see this series. <laughs> don't, don't you want to see that? I thought that was hilarious. The October kids. Sure. I could see it. I mean, all of them. I, I could see that as a future 1031 part. Let's let's turn these into little pieces of a future 1031, which I'm trying to remember if part three has any of those stories. I, I don't remember. But you know what? 
we'll get to that one next year. We'll get to that next year. Now, okay, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Was was the monster from the first short? Was that not the little boy who like took the candy out of the kid, the parents' stomachs? From okay, so like the the from the short where the parents ate the kids' candy, and then he started eating the candy, but he was still hungry. Oh no, that was the short. That was the story they were telling him. Yes. Sorry, I I totally mixed that up with being like a a faux short because you just watched. Tales, Tales of, of Halloween, Halloween, which has a story of that in it. Kind of, yeah. The more that I watch, like, you know, 1031 Part 2 and Tales of Halloween, the more that I watch those, I was like, wow, people really like Satan's Little Helper. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of inspiration. Oh, yeah. Draws from Satan's Little Helper. Well, we have, after the trailers, we have Malvolia, the Queen of Screams, who comes in to introduce our marathon of films that we're going to have. So she's, she's very much one of the, you know, Svengoolie, the Joe Bob, the, the Timu Elvira. There. <laughs> the Timu Elvira. <laughs> but she comes in in intros. She, she's only in the intro of these movies. And then, then at the end, like she doesn't come in, in between these stories at all. Right. Right. Which I was actually kind of surprised that you're setting it up for, She's your host for the evening. But anyway, that I was fine with that. So our, our stories, the Sam Hain liturgy, deadlift, Apache hatchet massacre, overkill, and sister Mary. So we'll start off with the first one, a Sam Hain liturgy. So you have this, this babysitter and the kid with this creature, creature in the basement. Well, so first he's upstairs painting masks. He's like paper macheing masks and the parents are off to a Halloween party. Which parents gotta go party. Out. I mean, come on. Party is an understatement. I mean, they're drinking, dancing, and snorting coke. Forget these kids. We gotta go out. We gotta go get high. And then, of course, the boyfriend shows up. I mean, they always do, right? And they is- of, co- of, course they, of course they always do. Yeah. Something is obviously not right because as soon as she makes him dinner, and I love that it's like on a tray. Like she's like she's catering to him, <laughs> like bringing you room service. Your food's ready. Something goes bump in the basement. What? The only part that kind of got me is why is she going to the basement to look for this kid? Even the boyfriend's like, what are you doing? Uh, that part just seemed like, no weird. Well, the boyfriend even said, like, I bet it's I bet. it. Uh, what is it? He said, like, I bet it's the kid. And she said, no. He's up in his room. Yeah. And so then she still goes downstairs and he's like, didn't he say like, it's probably like some raccoons or something. Something like that. Yeah. But like no raccoon makes the noises that (laughs) this thing is making. I've had a raccoon in my house. No, they don't. She proceeds to throw it a sandwich, but it it can't like, it can't stomach a sandwich. It's because it needs flesh, Drew. Of course, all creatures in a house locked in a basement need Flesh of, oh, but it, was it this one? It doesn't eat the faces? Is that what it was? No, 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 no. It doesn't eat the faces. What it, what they do with the faces, like after the boyfriend. Okay, so hold on. We, we, we're we jumping way. We, we are, we are. We're jumping around. That's so what we do. she tries to beat it a sandwich. It rejects the sandwich. And then they have to like run like hell because it's like growling and shit. She tries to call the parents. And that doesn't work because they're not answering. because they're partying. Like, the Johnsons or something. Yeah. They try to leave. But the little boy has... Well, the little boy I, turns out to be not so nice. He's creepy as hell. He's yeah, bashing he is. people's kneecaps in with a hammer. And he's running around like a freaking assassin. It, it's almost like the point of view of, like, Chucky running around. Just that little, like, flash. With his little costume on. He, like, breaks the kneecap of the boyfriend. Then he bashes in his head. And then cuts his face off, right? Is that what he... Does he cut uh, his feet off, or does he fe- just yes. feed it to the monster? No, no, he he does cut the face off. I, I wrote in my notes that Tommy is one crazy messed up kid. Well, he is. He is. <laughs> so he he does cut the face off because remember he he goes upstairs and he starts like painting on it again, and he attaches like elastic bands to it so they can wear it. He also hits the babysitter in the head with the with the claw part of the hammer, which I'm thinking like, why is she not dead? She gets knocked down pretty good. He stabs him. 
she like gives him a knife to the rib cage. And I'm like, this kid should be dying. But he gets up like Michael Myers in part two. <laughs> he just like, just like sits right up. What I did like this, this little short, I liked it. It's the act. It's a little rough around the edges acting wise, which is fine. But I dig the, the eighties kind of vibe to it. The whole vibe and the, the little kind of twist in the end, how she becomes the monster. I, I kind of dug that. I liked the fact that it was like her becoming the monster, but I also found it really weird that, you know, they're saying like, you were chosen, you were destined to be here. And like, even her own mother is like, I knew you were special, baby. I knew it <laughs> all this time. <laughs> like everyone's there for this cult meeting. They all have their own slit faces to uh like put on his masks which, the, boy, which the boyfriend you, wasn't supposed to be there right now he's like you weren't supposed to die but that also tells you that they they've done this quite a few times yes because they they each had their own little mask they each had their own little face to put on but here's the thing if this creature has been with them for hundreds of years if it's like a sacred being why are you chaining it up and also is it really going to die that quickly? That easily? Because the girl like bit its neck and, you know, made it bleed out. And if that's also the case, if, if you've had it for hundreds of years, why are you so upset that it's dying? Wouldn't you know that it's going to like transfer to a new host? You would think. You they, would think. They're, they're just going to carry on. I think that was my only like real kerfuffle with it. But we, I mean, we started out strong. It's, I think so. It was a good story to kind of start things off. And then we moved into our second story, Deadlift, which is basically an Uber driver picks up a vampire zombie guy. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because he's slowly like he starts, at, you know, as they're driving. It's just these two in a car. Expiring. Yeah. Because he he. I like the makeup in it because he he starts to get older and withered and just mm -hmm. like decrepit almost. And then he can he can talk through telepathy. Yeah. I like the fact that it's both vampire zombie ish, but also he's clearly an alien because he said like we travel. He said we travel and, and like we find we find these uh, we find these people. It's weird because like. He's driving at one point and he's like, where are we? He's all like, we're in your mind. We're not traveling anywhere. <laughs> he seems like he's in, you know, the further. Yeah. Because it's just dark and blue out. But then he's absorbed and he makes it to the girlfriend's house. And that just takes a moment with her to finally accept it. And then she is absorbed. Yeah. It, for a movie that has, I think, like a, a not bad setup, because I liked the time that the guy spent that the old man spent in the car talking to him ver verbally and through telepathy. Like I, I found that in, you know, engagement was really neat. But then once he got to the apartment, it just seemed to just, it was over. It was a simple concept. You know, it worked. It was one of those, like you had the story before with a monster and creature, but then your next one, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say short and sweet because I think the one after this was even shorter, but yeah, it, it, I don't know. It was a simple story. You, you kind of simplified compared to what you had in the story before. It's almost like it could have been, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take a, a really big throwback to, are you afraid of the dark? There is an episode in, are you afraid of the dark where the guy gets into a taxi and the taxi is driven by a ghost who died like 60 years ago when he plowed into a tree. And like, my thought is like, how great would it have been either if, if it was either way, either like an older car, that's like an Uber picks up living people and takes them and they eventually die. Or the newer Uber is picking up people. And if it's Halloween, then the costumes don't have to necessarily look like the old clothes that they died in. And he's actually picking up ghosts and taking them to visit like loved ones. And he doesn't realize it. Wasn't there, there a movie that came out 
in the 80s something highway riding the bullet or no yeah 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 that's a yeah there's riding the bullet that had uh, david arquette yes kind of a uh i don't want to say similar but something along those lines yeah he picked up like he was like a hitchhiker yeah that picked up. but like i don't know i think that i think that just could have been better like it, it, it seemed that seems more apropos to the title than i think what they were trying to do that's just me. It was still enjoyable. I still enjoyed my the story. You're right. I enjoyed the actor. I enjoyed the makeup. I think the concept was was fine. The next one, though. The Apache Hatchet Massacre 2. This. This one was really short. This was very short, but I thought was very fun. I like this concept. I like the fact that, like, the ghost is not an actual, like, physical person, but rather it inhabits it's the, the person. Hatchet. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think it's just, like, the spirit. Like once the person who is in the body dies and it just jumps, you know what it is? It's fallen. It's Denzel Washington and fallen. And the the spirit just like jumps within a breath from hatchet to person, from person to person, because (laughs) as soon as as soon as the other guy died and fell off the balcony, that girl immediately took her hand and like smeared the blood like war paint. And then she went off to the bonfire. Yeah, this one was fun. I think it's the shortest one of all of these. It is. Now, the fourth one. Overkill. Hands down the best short in the entire movie. Oh, it's hilarious. And it is the most clever and it's funny. I loved it. I mean, it starts off with boobs. I mean, come on. Well, it starts off with nervous little kids. Well, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, yeah. But it's all we eventually get boobs. It takes all your tropes of, you know, the the, you know, Jason the the crazy like stalker the cult leader all yeah. those those different tropes you would see in a horror movie they're all stalking this one girl trying to be like no this one's mine i've been watching her for for a week like for multiple days okay one day all right just this afternoon but it's still for you man <laughs> see that satanic cultists they ruin everything this reminded me a lot of um vicious fun yes which i still think is just also a, a hilarious movie if no one has seen vicious fun it's in the title it's fun like it for is fun. real yeah <laughs> you should go watch vicious fun as well but no i agree with you this one was just smart and like the dialogue was like quick-witted as it just goes. And I, I love like the Jason S killer just kind of like stands there. Mm-hmm. Like, and then all this time they go through this whole thing. And then it's like the, uh, the Satanist guy gets in <laughs> and kills her. I think the only thing that is problematic with this, not even problematic. It's such a technicality in the background After the girl dies and they're about to leave, there's someone in the other room that crosses view of the doorframe. And I think it was just a member of the crew who was just in the back. Yeah, you can see them in the background and they just like they're walking out of frame. So I think they're moving with the camera people outside or they were just in the other room doing something. But you can see you can see a body move i rewound it like twice and i watched and i went it's not the killer it's not the short serial killer with glasses it's not the satanist it's not the girl who just died it's some other person who's just in the background randomly it's a ghost ghost. maybe it's three men and a baby and then that leads us to our final story sister mary which is the weakest in my opinion it was but this one kind of felt like it was something or they were trying to to have it be something like out of a creep show or something like that. It just kind of felt that way where it was yeah. kind of a little quirky, but uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. It was used to kind of tie some of these other ones together. True. You did see the little devil boy from uh, the second one from the first story. From, from, sorry, from the first story. You did see him sitting out there, uh, very Satan's little helper-ish. Yes. But that's really it, right? Like, is that the only thing that actually connects any of them? I'm trying to think if you saw you saw the devil kid. Did we if see sh- e- any of the the 
the serial killer people like walking in the street? I don't think so. Because she's like this nun. And, and as she's walking down the street, I think there might have been something else. Like it, almost like a quick Easter egg glance as she's walking. Didn't she, did, she smiled at someone across the street. And like the other nun said, like, that's none of our concern or something. And I couldn't remember exactly what she looked at. It would have been neat if you even if you saw the if you saw the uh, the guy from Deadlift like stopping at a stop sign for letting her cross the street. Well, one person the we forgot about the the psycho kid from the previous story Overkill at the end the trick or treater kid who yeah. who came to him at 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 the end to kind of be like oh yeah I tried this house or there's this party it, it ends with like there's this party up the street so all three of them are going. But was, wasn't that kid in this last story? I don't remember if he was in the last story. I know that he followed the serial killer and uh, the Jason killer because he's like, wait, hold on. Come back. Are you guys going to that party? You know, he's just like the twisted little kid. Yes, exactly. And or anybody else in the, in the Sister Mary one. I don't. I swear we watched this movie, people. I swear. <laughs> I, we did. We, we watched it and we own it. I know. Now I feel like I have to like pop it on real quick and then pause, watch it really quick and come back. But no, I, I, it was between this one and as far as story goes, this one and deadlift were the weakest of them. I really like the other three better, not to say that they're all, not all good. Like I thought overall, this was a, a solid anthology film. There wasn't one or more than one where I'm just like, oh, my God, this is so awful. I want to turn it off right now. Yeah, true. And then we end with Mavolia, the queen of screams. And she says, like, I'm going to the uh, after party. Oh, did you not get the dead vite? Like any of those hosts would do. Overall, I enjoyed it. It's a fun little anthology. And, of course, you can't like all of them. No, I mean, it's... It happens with a lot of anthologies. I mean, there's some strong ones like you just watched Tales of Halloween, where Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the better anthology films. But there are stories that are stronger than others throughout. It just it just happens. It does. Like I said, after watching this one, I would rate this up there with the first one because I really did like the first one. And originally I rated this lower than the first one. And on this rewatch, I'm like, you know what? It's right up there equal. I I think I also gave it a three and a half. It's Halloween. This is coming out on Halloween. And I will tell you that our 31 Days of Terror on Tubi is uh, watch up one of the 1031 films. Anything else you want to say about 1031 part two? Mm, only that everyone should be looking forward to 1031 part three. And if you want to get ahead of the game, guys, you should go to... Uh, Scream Team video and order yourself a uh, 1031 Part 4. Yeah, from Scream Team releasing, 1031 Part 4 just came out. I know they're also working currently on The Barn Part 3 as well. The Barn is fun. So as you know, this is playing on both The Old Man Brad and Real Feels. So if you want to listen to more of either of us, if you're on our subsequent feeds... You can go check me out. Just look for Old Man Brad podcast. I'm out everywhere out there. I do only horror movies. I talk to filmmakers. I review movies and bring on fun guests like Drew and other people from time to time. And I have my series called Tales from Tubi, which is also over there. But go uh, go check those out if you if you want to have a listen. And you can just find the Real Feels podcast again anywhere, much like Old Man Brad, Twitter, Instagram, any of the podcatcher out there. Search for the Real Feels podcast. I unfortunately do not do cool things like Brad and bring on guests and interview people, but I I really should. I should get to that. You should. I want to be cool like Brad. Do it, Drew. But we'll be back. I mean, you and I will do a lot of stuff throughout the next year. Never gone. We'll also be back on Halloween next year for 1031 Part 3. Make sure you uh, subscribe to both of our shows and you won't miss any of that. But until next time, Drew, I'll talk to you later. Sounds good.